This is BBC Bite Size with Chris Smith and Dave Ansell. We're from The Naked Scientists. In this podcast, we're turning a Geiger counter on the world's background radiation. So, Dave, first of all, what actually is radiation? Well, radiation simply means anything that leaves a point and then travels in straight lines away from that point. So light from the sun is a form of radiation because it travels in straight lines. And you can talk about solar radiation to mean all the forms of electromagnetic radiation from the sun. What people mostly mean by radiation, though, is technically known as ionising radiation. So ionising, that means presumably it must have something to do with ions. Yes, it's a form of radiation that when it hits an atom can knock off electrons and so creates ions. These can be very reactive chemically and cause damage to living tissues and particularly worryingly DNA as this can lead to cancer. So where does this ionising radiation come from? There are two main sources of background radiation which you're exposed to all the time. Unstable atoms decaying radioactively on Earth and from cosmic rays hitting our atmosphere. But what is a, a cosmic ray? They're mostly charged atoms which are flying through space at huge speeds and then crash into our atmosphere. The particles can do damage themselves, but mostly they collide with atoms in the atmosphere, creating a shower of new particles, which can also do you damage. So am I being hit by cosmic rays? Depends on how much you fly, but you're probably being hit by a few every second. On average, cosmic rays make up about 10 to 15% of someone in the UK's annual radiation dose. So why should flying make a difference to that? The atmosphere protects us from cosmic rays to some extent, so the higher you fly, the less protection you get, as there's less atmosphere above you. And where else can we get radiation from? One of the biggest sources of radiation is a radioactive gas called radon, which is produced when radioactive elements in rocks such as granite break down. On average over the country, it makes up about 10 to 15% of your radiation dose. Of course, it's very dependent on what kind of rocks you live above. And about 15% of your exposure can come from radioactive elements in rocks and buildings. Another 10 to 15% from radioactive elements in food. So food is radioactive? Only very slightly. Naturally, there are radioactive elements in the soil and the atmosphere, so plants will pick them up as they grow, and of course animals eat plants, so meat can also be radioactive. What about man-made radiation, though? Yes, you can be exposed to man-made radiation. Your biggest exposure will probably be for medical reasons. X-rays and various cancer treatments expose people to relatively high doses of radiation. Though, of course, it's very dependent on what treatments you have. And what about nuclear power stations? Because they produce radioactive waste, don't they? Yes, they can create quite a lot of radioactive waste, but it's very well contained. So in the UK, nuclear power provides about 0.1% of the average dose of radioactivity, which rather surprisingly is less than coal power, which releases radioactive elements locked up inside the coal. And what about testing nuclear bombs? Because people used to do that a lot. Yes, a nuclear bomb will release an awful lot of radioactivity. So even though they mostly took place in the Pacific, the remnants of old nuclear bomb tests also contribute, but only about 0.2% of your annual dose. This is falling because there are far fewer nuclear bomb tests today than in the 1950s and 60s. Work and other sources of radioactivity produce about another 0.3% of your average dose. So non-medical radiation produced by humans is only about 06 of your average exposure. We're exposed to radiation all the time, but unless something goes wrong, most of it is natural.